Today's project is going to be a Valentine's wreath with watercolor with Viv. Now here is the supply list. Go ahead, pause the video, take a screenshot of it. The brushes we're going to use today will be a number 8 ultra round, a number 4 ultra round, and a number 2 ultra round. Now I'm just going to show you the colors. It will be quinacridone rose, cadmium red, aureole, lemon yellow, thalo blue, and ultramarine blue. And sepia at the bottom, but we're really not going to use sepia for this project. Now let me get this focused in here. And the very first thing I want you to do is get some clear water on your brush, and I'm using the number 8. And just, okay, my water's not that clear, but... <laughs> It's going to be okay. Just put some clear water in the center over the stamens. And once you get that covered, just take a little bit of the lemon yellow and drop it in. And then you're going to let this dry completely. Just leave, Once you get it in there, just leave it alone. Let it dry. We're going to start on one of the flower petals. Now let's start on this large one down here and we're just going to put clear water first. This is the wet on wet technique. So we're putting our clear water down and then we're going to take just a little bit of the Q Rose, Quinacridone Rose, but we're just going to call it Q Rose for short. And then we're just going to go around the very edges and let the water do the work. Let me get this in here so you can see which color I'm talking about. We'll just let the water do the work. See how beautifully it flows? Oh, so pretty. I love wet and wet technique. And then I'm just taking the brush and kind of um, just moving it around a little bit in the water. Moving the color. Now I'm taking the lemon yellow and I am just dropping it in near the center of the flower and letting it mix and mingle with the rose and then just letting it spread out where it wants to. I'm going to lift a little bit of this color with a dry brush. I've dried my brush and I'm just lifting it. And now I'm just going to add a little cadmium red and some spots just to get a little variation in color, a little interest, and change the tone just a little bit, the, the value, and darkens it up just a bit. Then you're going to let that dry. I'm just let me clean these edges up a little bit. They're just a little bit raggedy for me, so clean those up. Let me pull out here so you can see better. I'm going to go ahead with clear water. My water looks a little pink because I didn't wash my brush well, but since we're going to put pink on it, it, it doesn't really matter. So just coat. A nice coat of water down, a nice layer of water, and then get a little bit of the rose, make it a little bit waterier so it'll be a lighter pink, and just drop it in there and let the water spread it around. Then where you want it to be a little bit darker, just come back in and drop in a little bit more. Add the yellow again near the center of the flower and let it flow out and mix and mingle with the rose. And we're going to make these a little bit lighter pink. And just add a little bit more of the rose in there. I'm calling it pink, it's rose. And again the same thing, a little water, drop in a little rose, and just let the water spread it around. Now I'm adding a little bit of cadmium red just just to give it a little darkness and a little interest. And I'm lifting a little bit where I want it to be lighter. I'm taking the dry brush, I'm wiping it on a paper towel, and then coming back in and picking up the excess color and water. I decide this needs to be a little bit darker, so just add a little bit more. And we're going to come and do this petal, and we're going to work our way around the flower doing the same exact technique on the really large leaves, the really large petals, I guess I should say. So again, 
clear water. It's a wet on wet technique. And then just drop in the rows, the Q rows. Let the water do the work. Let it spread and mix. Put the yellow, the lemon yellow, near the center of the flower and let it flow up toward the rose color and let it do its mixing, let it do its thing. And of course, put in a little pop of cadmium just to give it a little bit of interest and a change of color and a little bit more depth. This is really the, one of the most simplest techniques, the simplest, um, simplest type of technique you can do. And it's really beautiful when you finish. Also, I want to point out that there are some some sections in between the petals that I'm leaving completely white just for interest. But as you notice, every petal I'm doing the same thing. I'm putting a layer of water and then dropping in the pink, dropping in the yellow, and then just letting the water do the work and coming back with a dry brush that I've wiped off on my paper towel and picking up excess where I want it to be a little bit lighter. Again, same technique here. Just water and then drop in the color and let the water do the work. And you don't want to brush across the whole surface of the petal. You want the water to, to actually let the color flow where it wants to. It'll look flat if you try to paint in the whole petal with your brush. So the best is to do is just to paint it with water first, the clear water, and then just drop it in, just touch the brush. When I say I'm dropping it in, I'm just touching the brush in certain areas and letting it flow across the water. More cadmium yellow right there in the corner, I mean not yellow, red right there in the corner. And you want each petal to dry before you do the next one or what I, what I mean to say is don't do two petals really close together unless you're going to leave a little white space because they'll bleed into each other. So if you're going to do one right on top of the other, let it dry first before you do that one. Instead, move around the flower. As you work, just move around where, where the area is dry. And it's the same exact technique every single petal. Put the water in first, clear water. And then drop in the rose and drop in the cadmium red. And you can actually see my water here because it's pink. I'm not washing my brush out very well between petals, but it's okay because they're all going to be pink. So there's no danger of it looking muddy or gray because I'm just using the same exact color. I'm not putting a green over it or anything. If you had pink down first and put the green over it, it would look a little gray, a little muddy. Again, don't forget to put your lemon yellow near the center of the flower. Leave some little white spaces between the petals just to give it some design and some interest. This is not a realistic flower. This is a stylized flower. So it doesn't have to look exactly like the actual peony. You can um, take some liberties with it because it is stylized and not realistic. Here I am actually just painting straight onto the paper before putting any water, well, without putting water, and that's just a wet on dry technique I did with those little tiny ones because it gives me more control over where the paint goes. Here I have again just wet it here in this petal, put in the lemon yellow, and now I am just tapping in some of the rows and letting it mix and mingle together. Now I'm going to keep working my way around each petal, each flower. Well, I guess there's only one flower, but around the petals of the flower. Excuse me. <laughs> And that one, I'll let it butt right up to the petal under it or on top of it. And because it's dry, they're not going to bleed together. And now I'm just adding a little bit of shadow in there. I am going to work on this petal next. Clear water. 
wet on wet technique, easiest, easiest technique, not very many techniques. Actually, I think there's only two in this whole painting and that's wet on wet that we're doing with the petals and then wet on dry that we're doing with the leaves. So it's just two techniques in this whole painting, but the painting will come out really beautiful even with two techniques. And you don't have to use anything fancy, no fancy techniques. Just wet on wet and wet on dry. And a little bit of lifting. Lift, the, lift it just to make it lighter in some areas with a dry brush, which I showed you earlier. So I waited for those to dry, so now I'm going to work around this petal. It's, it's dry, so I'm going to do the petal behind it with a little clear water. Put in a little lemon yellow. A little bit of the rose put it along the edges and let it flow down and mix and mingle with that yellow leaving a little bit of light areas here and there to give it some visual interest really makes it pretty I decided this one needs just a little bit of something so I wet it and now I'm just um, tapping in some cadmium red just to change up the color a little bit. Again, we're doing the same thing. We got the water down first and now we're just adding a little bit of the rose and the red in that petal. This is really a, an easy technique and you get really pretty results, especially if you use these colors. Now, if you want to change it up, it's your painting. You can use other colors besides rose and red and yellow. It's up to you. It's your painting. But um, these colors look really pretty for Valentine's, so that's why I chose the pinks and the reds and the yellows. Because I really think it makes a, a good Valentine wreath. And it goes with the theme of Valentine's Day so well. Now in here, I am doing wet on dry. I'm just taking the color, I'm putting it straight on dry paper and then coming back and putting a little bit more color in and char which you might want to call charging it. I charged a little extra color in there. Now I'm taking the cadmium red and just um, dropping it into that little sheet of water I put down, that little layer of water. It looks really pretty. That is like the inside of one of the petals, so it's darker in there. And you can barely see the outside it hasn't been painted yet. <laughs> We're almost finished with all the petals of the flower. We're just going to do these last few here. Same technique I've been talking about. And a little cadmium red there at the bottom for a shadow and give it a little more interest. And I'm doing a wet on dry right here. I decided that needs a little bit of color there. And again, the reason I'm doing wet on dry in those really tiny spaces is so I can have more control of the color and where it goes. And again, wet on dry, tiny space. Where the brush is wet with the paint, but the paper is dry, I haven't added water first. And the reason for that is it gives you more control over where the paint goes. And I didn't want it to spread all out. All right, now we're going to add a little more water. A little of the Q Rose. Leaving some white of the paper shining through in some spots to give it more interest. Little cadmium red at the bottom just for a shadow effect and to give it more interest and more depth. And a little color variation. Now we're going to do the tip of this petal that we painted a few minutes ago where it's curled up and over and at the bottom we're just adding a little bit of shadow by just putting the color right on the edge and letting it spread up into the water. 
Again, we are doing wet on dry up here because it's a small area. I want more control and a little bit more color to it. A little cadmium red for some shadows and visual interest. Okay, so now we have all of the petals painted. So the next thing we're gonna work on is gonna be the stamens in the center. I'm gonna take a little bit of the lemon yellow, a little bit of the cadmium red, and make sort of a yellow orange color. And then just paint around the stamen. Now normally I would not make the stamen that dark, the lines, the outline that dark with the pencil. Because once you put yellow over it, you can't erase it. But I really did it so that you could actually see the stamens and know where they are. Just to get a visual idea. So that when you do yours, don't do them as dark as I did. So that you can cover them easily with the paint. And just do little sections, little shapes. And outlines and little shadows. And that really makes the stamen pop out the lighter color leaving some of that lighter lemon yellow and just painting around it with the darker yellow orange really makes it pop out it gives it a little bit of texture and it indicates the stamen inside of the the peony now I'm just adding a little shadow right there I think it needs some more shadowing in there a little bit darker And just let that dry once you get it, once you get it how, however you would like it, till it's your satisfaction. Now we're going to start on some leaves. We're going to take thalo blue and a little bit of the lemon yellow and make a nice bright green. And this is the second sort of technique that I was telling you about. It's just the wet on dry. We're not wetting the paper first. We're leaving the paper completely dry. And we're just painting in sections on the leaves and we're leaving the little veins blank. They're just white. It's the white of the paper. So that that gives it some visual interest. Like I said, this is a stylized type flower. We're not trying to make it realistic. We want it more stylized and fantasy type. So we got each little section painted on that leaf and you can see where the veins are drawn. So just paint the sections inside of the veins and leave a little white space in between each of the little sections, which will represent the vein. The white section will represent the vein. And just try not to let them touch. Keep the white space because that um, helps you with your texture and your visual interest. Now let's see. That looks pretty good. I'm going to take some ultramarine blue and a little bit of the areolan yellow and make a different more grade green and just kind of tap it in while this is still wet. Some air into the areas where I really want it shadowy, a little darker. And we're going to keep working on these leaves. And I've mixed got a nice thalo blue lemon yellow mixture and this time I made it a little bit darker by adding more blue. And we're going to go up and start on these top leaves. Again, the same thing. We're just painting it in little sections, leaving the veins white, just the white of the paper. And we're doing it on dry paper. We're not wetting the paper first. We're just having the paintbrush be wet and the paper dry. So it is dry, I mean wet on dry, whereas the flower petals were wet on wet. And just follow the little shapes and leave the veins white. And we're going to do each leaf like this. And um, you can add a little color in some spots to give it a little bit of um, a shadow and a little bit more interest in some of the sections if you want to. 
It's your painting. Get creative. It's really what I want to see you do is to make it really yours with your own color scheme if you want it to. Mix your own colors. Experiment. See what works best for you. That's the whole point of art is expressing yourself in the way that you want it. And we're just going to keep on painting these little sections, painting them up. Really, this has been one of um, the easiest tutorials that my private Facebook group has just really kind of blossomed. Excuse the pun. <laughs> but they really blossomed with this one. They really liked it. It was easy. It was simple techniques. It was, there was nothing difficult about it. They didn't have to worry about making it look really realistic but they still got this a beautiful flower out of it so now I'm mixing up the ultramarine and a little bit of the um, areolan it makes a different kind of a green it, it's actually more of a, na a natural true to nature green and it's darker than the phthalo and lemon mixture so I'm going to put it on this one leaf that's a little further away so it may look a little darker color of the tone might look different again I'm just experimenting as I go to and I like it I like this color if you want to use it make all the leaves that color you can you don't have to do the phthalo and the lemon you can use this color instead I like to mix it up and make the leaves different colors different shades but that's just how I like to paint you, like, you can experiment and really find out what you like. That's really what I encourage you to do. So we've got those leaves, and they're looking pretty good. Now we're going to do start going around the flower and work on these leaves here. This almost has a vintage... The design is almost like a vintage Art Deco. I don't know if Art Deco is the right word, but it's, it's, it's really got kind of a vintage vibe to it, I think, which I really love vintage. So this one was right up my alley. I was like, yeah, I really like this. Hopefully, hopefully my followers will like it too. And you see I'm doing different colors in these bottom leaves. And I'm actually mixing some of the phthalo blue and lemon yellow with the other green mixture of ultramarine and areolan here and there just to give it a little bit more interest. I mean that's really important in your painting to have things have a lot of variation. You don't want everything to just be one flat color or one flat tone. It's really the tones, the values, how light and dark things are that really, really adds the interest. So we've got a couple more leaves to finish up, and then we are going to start on the um, actual vine, the little buds, and the vine that is shaped like a heart. And again, remember to leave the little white sections, the little white veins, and paint each leaf in a section. And change up the colors every now and then so that it's not all one flat color. You can also, while it's still, the sections are still wet, come back in with other colors and drop in there. That's perfectly fine. And the other thing is, m make sure you leave a little margin, a little white paper between the flower petals and the flower leaves so that they don't bleed. You don't want the green bleeding into the pink because that'll just give you gray in a muddy mess you don't want. I'm going with a little brighter here with a little brighter phthalo and lemon mixture. Like I said, I like to mix up the different colors. I don't want it to be all one type of green. So I like to use several variations. And the way that I vary that is just by the amount of blue or yellow I add to it. More blue, it's going to be a little darker, a little 
more toward blue, a little yellow. It's going to be lighter and brighter, more lemony yellow. So that's a good way to mix up, um, or I should say vary your colors, is by mixing them in different ratios of blue and yellow to get your green. I really like the way that these leaves are coming out. Again, stylized, not realistic, yet you know exactly what they are, that they are leaves. This is a flower. So, and it also, again, has that kind of vintagey look that I love. I, I tell myself sometimes I should have been born in the Victorian times because that is the style that I absolutely love. I love those old Victorian homes. And I can imagine this being framed in one of them. And I'm mixing up a little bit more bright green. Finishing off this last leaf. And then we're going to start on the vine and the little flower buds. Ooh, that's really bright. I'm going to leave it, though. I like it. And one last little section. There we go. We're done with that. Now I'm going to pan out a little bit so you can see the whole design. And I'm just taking the pink, or I guess rose, and starting to color or paint just the little buds. And doing some of the wet on wet technique just to add a little bit of the um, shadowing that I would like. Leaving a little bit of space in between each. A little bit of the white space. I'm going to start up here. I'm going to do the wet on wet technique with these. A little bit of rose. Wet on wet again. This time I'm going to use cadmium. Like I said, I like to vary it, vary it up some, change it up some so it's not just blah. And then I am going to use my green and start painting in the little vine sections. And I'm dropping a little extra green for the shadows. And so that it won't be one flat color. I'm just painting the vines. I'm just doing it wet on dry. The paper is dry. Just painting it. I'm doing the wet on dry here with this one. With this bud. Like I said, you can change it up. Use it interchangeably. However you want to feel comfortable. And I'm lifting a little out because I got a little too dark. So I'm taking my brush. I'm tapping it on the, on the paper towel. Drying it and then just lifting it. I'm doing a little bit more wet on wet here with the rose and you're just going to work your way around the whole heart shape doing this very similar to the way we did the petals and you can use either technique of you know wet on wet or wet on dry and we are going to do the wet on dry for the actual vine the green vine we're just letting the paper be wet, I mean dry, and just the putting the wet paint right onto the dry paper. And it's starting to come up, starting to, starting to take shape. It looks really pretty. And if you're really um, ambitious, after you get it finished, you can hand letter a, a nice little verse inside, a little love note, and actually give it to someone or you can hang it on your wall as a decoration have it matted or framed and hang it on your wall I think I'm gonna actually hand letter mine once I get it all finished and use it as a little bit of decor now I'm using a lot more blue in this vine and less yellow 
just again just to give it a little bit more of a variation a little change up now I'm adding a little more yellow and then I'm just coming back in with the blue mixture see how I'm just coming back in I'm doing it um, wet on dry and then just coming back in with the blue and putting it in the corners a little more yellow in that mixture and you just keep going all the way around doing the same thing just changing up your greens add a little more blue a little more yellow depending on what you feel like there's no rhyme or reason it's totally up to you and then while it's still wet just coming back in and adding a little bit more in the corners or at the ends just so that it gives it the the impression of having a shadow Just paint each little section, leave a little bit of a white space in between each. Change up the greens, it's looking really good. And then you're just going to want to paint each one of these blossoms, or I guess they're called buds. Paint each one of the buds with the rose and the cadmium yellow, and again, interchange those colors. What I mean by that is on some, make them the rose pink the rose and on some make them the cadmium red just to give it a little bit of variation and so that it looks nice and you'll work your way around and the good part about this they're not really close to each other so you can keep working you don't have to stop and wait for them to dry I think I got too much on that so I'm gonna lift some out and you see how I dry my brush off on the paper towel and then lift it and then put it back on the paper towel. And that's a good way if you get feel like you have too much paint is to just lift it off while it's still wet. You just dry your brush on your paper towel. See, again, just lift it off. So there's actually three techniques if you want to count lifting as one of them. We've got the wet on wet that I'm doing right now. Water first and then drop in the color. And then you can do the um, wet on dry where the paper is dry and you just paint directly to the paper. And then lifting where you, if you get too much water, too much paint, you dry your brush with the paper towel and just lift it off and then put the excess on the paper towel and keep lifting it off until you're satisfied with how light it is. And you can go back and add red in, into some of the pink, pink buds. And give it a little bit more oomph. And we're just going to keep working our way around. Keep working our way around. It's pretty fast now. I've got my, I've got it actually speeded up so that we're not taking all day because they're all pretty much done the same way. And I'm doing a little wet on dry right here. And I'm lifting a little bit out in the center where I want it lighter. And we're just going to keep going, keep going. We're almost finished. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Just remember, it's really easy. Just three techniques. Just wet on wet, wet on dry, and lifting out. And you're mostly letting the water do the work for you. You're varying the colors. You're varying the darkness and lightness just to give it, since it's a stylized and not, and then not realistic. So do all those things, and it will come out really well. Variation, wet on wet, lifting, wet on dry, and you've got it made. Oh, and remember to leave the little white sections between your leaf veins or to be your v leaf veins all right we are getting close to being finished here and we've just got a few more little buds and we're doing an alternate type wet on wet and wet on dry technique as we go down adding a little bit of the cadmium into the rose color 
And there you have it. We're finished. Thank you for watching.